First of all, folks, I'm beyond thrilled to be here at Tycon again this year. I'm thrilled because it's a privilege to join all of you at the biggest entrepreneurship event of the year. And the topic of Unstoppable India is very close to my heart. Let me start with a story. This is one of my favorite stories. This was a story which was famously told by David Wallace many, many years ago. But let me tell you this again. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to beat an older fish swimming the other way around. The older fish nods at them and says, morning boys, how's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit. And then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, what the hell is water? The reason I tell this story is because the most obvious important realities in life around us are often the ones that are the hardest to see. They're like water, they're all around us, especially for the fish, but it's very hard for them to see it. And I strongly believe that the opportunities and runway all of us have in India today, it's a bit like water. It's an obvious reality, but sometimes we come in our own way and we are unable to see it clearly. So my job today is to not to be the, the wise old fish. And believe me, I have a long way to go before I'm old and wise. But I do want to make sure that I shine the light on the water, aka the opportunities around us in India today. So with that context, I will structure the conversation today on Unstoppable India in three parts. I'll start with what brought us here. What makes India, India? Number two, what is the runway ahead of us? What are the opportunities looking at us? And number three, what would it take for all of us as entrepreneurs, as technologists, as Indians to make this India's decade and truly make India unstoppable? So let's start with what brought us here, what makes India, India. And I often quote Rochish Sharma, who famously once said, India is a country that consistently disappoints both the optimist and the pessimist. We consistently disappoint, or better said, surprise both the optimist and pessimists. India has always had potential, tremendous possibilities, but somehow we've managed to stay on the edge and we've hit slightly below our weight. But that's starting to change in India. In the last two years, all of us in India have witnessed a once in a lifetime crisis with the pandemic. And I really hope it's only once in a lifetime. But we didn't let, did not let that to come in our way as a nation. The India of today is truly at an inflection point. You can now almost start to feel it. It's like a new digital India starting to emerge. And there are three tailwinds that are working for India today and that have brought us here. Number one, the demographic and the talent profile we have. I realize every number in India will look very big from one lens and very small with another lens. So I will not go through all the statistics. But what stands out for me in India today is a few things. One, 50% of Indians Half of India today is below 25 years of age. Every second person in India today has access to internet. India is producing the largest number of computer science graduates anywhere else in the world every year. 2.15 lakh graduates every year. We now have the largest developer ecosystem in the world, 5 million plus developers. And we will very, very soon overtake the number of software developers the US has very soon. And this creates tremendous opportunities for all of us in India. The second tailwind that has brought us here is what I call the India stack, the three digital infrastructure highways that India has built over the last few years, Aadhaar, Jandhan, mobile and data revolution. This is not new news. All of you know about them, but these three digital infrastructure highways are now allowing Indian businesses and builders to build and drive at a pace like never before. I'll give you a data point to bring this to life. Everybody knows Jandhan, our financial inclusion scheme and UPI is, is a big part of that. UPI is just four years old. But today, UPI is processing 2x the number of transactions that American Express does globally, double the number of transactions that American Express does. That's the scale we've grown this to. And then the third tailwind that has brought us here is technology. And not just cutting edge technology that everybody today talks about. It's different. It's technology that is getting simplified and democratized like never before driven by the cloud in India. Democratization of technology is essential in any digital economy and more so for India. And technology today is changing every aspect of the way Indian businesses operate. And never before in history has this change occurred so fast. The next generation of technologies in India are becoming simpler. They're no longer rocket science. And we as AWS have a significant role to play in making that happen. For example, India today is the fastest adopter of AI ML in the world. It's one of the fastest adopter of AI ML in the world. And AWS is on a mission to put AI and ML in the hands of every developer every data scientist, every researcher in India 
by making it simple. I'll give you an example, Credit Vidya, which is a fintech startup. They run their underwriting technology on AWS to enable access to affordable institutional credit to over 250 million underserved Indian citizens, over 250 million Indians. They're using AI, simple AI built on AWS, and they've been able to lower the loan processing cost from roughly $2 to less than one cent today. That's the power of technology. And the exciting part, and the exciting part behind the simplified technology, as I call it, is that innovation is no longer limited to big corporations with deep pockets in India. Anyone from a student in a dorm room to a farmer in rural India can start building life-changing solutions. And imagine the unlock for India, 1.3 billion Indian minds have access to the simple, affordable, and accessible technology. And we as AWS are working very hard to make that happen. Let's shift gears and talk about the second part of the story. What is the runway ahead of us as Indians? And we often hear about India being the third largest startup ecosystem in the world, 40,000 active startups. Quite honestly, I can't count the number of unicorns that are coming up, and it's incredible to see that. But to me, the exciting news is that India is now the most natural place in the world for both B2C and B2B startups. We were always the hub for services in India, but now we are seeing product innovation in India at a scale like never before. We are becoming the SaaS factory of the world. More than 1,000 funded SaaS companies in India today. India today has the playbooks, we have the ecosystem, we have the talent, we're learning from our mistakes, and we're building for the world. And with cloud leveling the playing field like never before, we're seeing global category, globally category creating companies coming out of India. And I'm seeing this desire to build global products out of India, be it ISVs like Freshworks, Dhruva, Capillary, Postman. It is incredible to see the desire and ambition they have. And if SaaS companies can reach their full potential, we have a value creation potential and opportunity of anywhere from $500 billion to a trillion dollars in India in the next few years. So there's a lot more blue sky in India, and I could go on with these examples and statistics, but let me pull this together. India today is one of the world's largest open markets for technology companies to serve and for entrepreneurs like you to build. Let me say this again. India today is one of the world's largest open markets for technology companies to serve and for entrepreneurs like you to build. Hand on my heart, there is no market like India today anywhere in the world. And we as AWS are committed to India. Our mission in India is to empower Indian builders and businesses to build a better India, be it skilling for digital talent. AWS has trained over 2 million, over 2 million Indians on cloud skills since 2017, many more to skill. We're building for India. We have a massive region in India and Mumbai. We have a second region going live later this year in Hyderabad. And we're supporting and handholding startups through enablement, through mentorship, through connections to the ecosystem and programs like Activate. Let me move to the final part of the story today. What would it take for, for us to make this India's decade, truly make India unstoppable? And if you believe anything that I've shared so far, India's transformation story has been phenomenal. But folks, we're not going to stop here. The next decade is going to be India's moment to shine. It is our time to be a global technology powerhouse in India, and we can all be part of this story. But to make this happen, I would urge all of you as entrepreneurs, as builders, to focus on three pillars as you build high growth and high impact businesses that will truly fuel this rocket ship that's unstoppable India. And the three pillars, and I call them the three A's, number one is ambition, the desire to build for the world from India. Number two is agility, build for agility in every aspect of your startup, in every aspect of your business. And that comes from cloud and technology. And number three, all in together. India today needs leaders who are not only encouraging, but making inclusion, diversity, and sustainability a part of their lives. Let me double click on each of these three. Let's start with ambition. Ambition is a beautiful word. It's one of my favorite words. It's a, it's a beautiful emotion. It's actually a powerful drive to attain a future state that is different from today. It's a drive to change status quo. And at, at Amazon, we call it think big. And thinking big in a country like India is not a privilege. It's almost a duty. Given the scale of our country, the intractable problems that we have in our country, and the role that each of us can be playing today, for all of us to be worth our salt as entrepreneurs or leaders or technologists or professionals, we need to constantly think big and raise the bar in India. I genuinely believe the greatest human weakness today is self-deprecation, selling ourselves short. So think big for India. Don't sell yourself short. You need to stop yourself from stopping yourself. All of us need to stop ourselves from stopping ourselves. There'll never be a perfect time for any of us to stretch, stretch ourselves, right? To do something that stretches you. And that's true whether you're starting a new business, having a child, changing careers, or wrestling with any number of challenges today. If you were ready for it, it won't be growth. 
if you are ready for it, it won't be growth. So think big. Think big in terms of the markets that you're addressing. Think big in terms of the products that you're building. Think big about the customer experiences that you want to develop. The question that I ask myself every day and I'd urge you to ask yourself, do I still have the fire burning within me or am I letting life burn out my flame? And the answer is hell yes, every day. I still have the fire burning in me and India needs all of us to keep this fire burning within us as we build for India. Let's talk about the second pillar, agility. And I don't make definitive statements usually, but the one thing that I can say with certainty today is that it doesn't matter what vertical, horizontal, or scale at which you are in your business and what you're building. There's another entrepreneur out there, or there's another business that's out there who's working very hard on delighting your customers at twice the speed and half the price that you offer today. Let me say this again, at twice the speed and at half the price that you offer today. We say this at Amazon all the time. We call this divine discontent. Customers are always beautifully, wonderfully dissatisfied. Even when they report they're being happy, even when business is great, even when they don't know it yet, customers want something better. And this means as a business, as an entrepreneur, you need agility, not just to keep up with customer demands, but to stay a step ahead and invent on their behalf and delight them. Agility is the ability to scale up and scale down, work across online and offline channels, reduce the cost of curiosity in your business through data and using data better. And that's where cloud and AWS come in. Cloud reacts well to uncertainty, and it changes everything when it comes to agility. With the cloud, you can get rid of physical assets which slow you down while making virtual equivalents appear and disappear instantaneously on your command. Cloud makes turning ideas and products and into products and services much, much easier. Cloud is the single biggest enabler of experimentation I've seen in my career. It's the single biggest, single biggest enabler of experimentation that I've seen in my career. So the only competitive advantage that you can build today as a founder, as a startup, as an entrepreneur, is the, is the agility that you'll build in your business. And you have to use cloud and technology to constantly invent and reinvent. The third pillar that we all need is what I call all in. As Amazon, one of our leadership principles is success and scale bring broad responsibility. Success and scale bring broad responsibility. And my favorite part of this principle is that leaders create more than they consume. Leaders need to create more than they consume and always leave things better than they found them. What leaders do is quite honestly just make situations and people better. And we do this and, and they do this with their actions, with their decisions, with their behaviors, with their messages. And all in could mean many, many things to all of us, but I'll just pick on two that are close to my heart, inclusion and sustainability. Inclusion, I've always believed that as a leader, you're merely an overhead unless you're bringing out the best in your teams. You're merely an overhead. And you and I can't bring the best out of our teams unless they're diverse and inclusive. If you look at India's workforce participation rate of women returning to work after a career break, it has sharply declined by a fourth from 2020 to 2021, as the pandemic has, pandemic has doubly burdened many of them. So none of us have the permission to slow down. Seriously, none of us have the permission to slow down. And we will not make India unstoppable till 50% of the potential workforce in India, that is women, are not part of the technology work. None of us are allowed to slow down. Sustainability, we all know this. Nature does not negotiate. Nature does not negotiate. We know this, but we ignore it once again like the water around us. And lack of sustainability in India today is not just an existential threat, and not just India, but for the globe, but it also opens up significant opportunities for entrepreneurs. So having an environmental-friendly model is no longer a nice thing to do. It's critical to our survival. It's critical to your survival, my survival, and the survival of our children. Again, cloud can play, play a fairly significant role in this. And I'll give you some examples. Moving workloads from the cloud or to the cloud from on-prem data centers can reduce energy consumption by, by roughly 80%, 80%. I'll give you another example. For a one, one megawatt enterprise data center today, moving to the cloud can reduce workload-related scope to greenhouse gas emissions by nearly 2,400 metric tons per year, 2,400 metric tons per year. That is the equivalent of removing 2,000 cars from the road. 2,000 cars on the road. And believe me, many cities in India today can do with that. So with that, let me try and bring this to a close and pull together the three threads that I've spun so far. And I'll go back to the two young fish and remind you of the water that is around us today in India. Three messages to leave you with. Number one, this is going to be India's decade. India is one of the most exciting playgrounds of this century. Number two, it's entrepreneurs and builders like yourself who can drive the unlocks that India needs. The future is now, the future is here. 
with access to the simplified technology that we're all working hard to make happen and the global capital that's moving to India today, you have everything you need as startup founders to build disruptive, life-changing solutions. All you need is a will and you can be unstoppable too. And number three, unstoppable India needs a different kind of a leader, a different kind of leader, a leader who leads with ambition, a leader who brings agility to everything that they do, and a leader who goes all in with inclusion and sustainability. So let's build for not just an unstoppable India, but for a better India. Let's build in a way that gives hundreds of millions of Indians a shot at prosperity. Thank you.